Today we are looking at the rear suspension um, of the VX220 Turbo. As you can see I've removed this one. I will show you how I removed it, but I didn't want to do a video of actually removing it because it would have been too long and I had um, a number of difficult engineering things I had to do to get it off because of rust and corrosion. Anyway, what you can see here is that we have an upper wishbone arm, we have a lower wishbone arm, we have our damper and spring, we have our brake caliper, we have our hub carrier, and we have our hub which also holds the disc, which will fit in there, and also has the bearing in there, and also has the um, sensor for the ABS. Right, and here's the drive shaft over here, and this drive shaft will fit through the back of the hub carrier, through the hub, and will come out, the threaded end of the drive shaft will come out through here, and basically, once this goes through, you'll put the washer on, you will put the castle nut on, like so, and that will thread all the way in, and then you will lock it in with this pin, which goes through here, like so. So you'll have the castle nut behind here, the pin going through, and that will lock on. Okay, let me just take that off. I'll leave that in there for a moment, so that we understand what's going on. Now, I'm not going to pretend to you that it's always going to be easy to remove the wishbone arms uh, from the chassis, but it's not a difficult job. It only becomes difficult if there's rust and corrosion and things don't want to turn around, which is what I experienced. I also want to show you the handbrake cable that connects up to the um, to the rear brake caliper. This is a Brembo brake caliper at the back. And the handbrake cable operates the same piston um, as, your, as the foot pedal will operate. So that makes it um, an easier system in terms of there's no other hub with brake shoes in it to run the handbrake. It's all run off from the caliper. So let's just have a very quick look at how the, um, the suspension is mounted to the chassis. Uh, let's have a look at the top wishbone. Um, there are two mounting points. There are bushes inside um, the mounting points, one here, one here, this one I've removed, um, and these will connect to the chassis here, um, one here, one here, I don't know if that's visible or should I get a light? No, it's visible. Excellent. So it will connect through here and basically we will have a bolt, like so, that will simply go straight through and the nut is attached, the nylon nut is attached on the other side and that holds and the bushing sits um, in there. So if we look at it from the, from the wishbone arm, we have a bolt that will go through like that. We have these square washer things, I don't know what they're for, they, they sort of lock the nut on but I can't understand the purpose because we have a nylon nut but we'll discuss that later and that's how it will lock on. So basically when you want to remove it, um, you simply take the nut off and you push the bolt out. Okay, so it's that simple. However, what I experienced was something a bit different. Um, when I had my bushing in there, I took the nut off, like so, and then the bolt wouldn't push out. And the reason it wouldn't push out was because, if you look at the bushing, there is an inner collar, the inner tube, which is a metal tube probably steel or something, I don't know what, what it's made from. And basically, it had corroded itself, or should I say welded itself, onto my bolt. So when I wanted to push my bolt out, no matter what I did, hit it, whatever, it wouldn't come out. And if I turned it, what actually happened was, it broke the rubber, so the, the metal collar broke away from the rubber, so the metal collar was twisting, the bolt was t turning, everything was turning, but it wasn't breaking itself free. So what did I have to do? Well, I couldn't find any other solution except that, well let me put the bolt back in so I can show you exactly what I did. So if we consider this is fitted to the car, like so, I prized the little gap 
on either side between the bolt and the housing and then I got a hacksaw blade and cut through it. That took a hell of a long time because I could only move backwards and forwards about two centimeters, about an inch. And I had to just keep doing that for ages and ages and ages. And then when I got bored, like after 40 minutes, I'd go and do something else and come back again later on and do another 40 minutes, go back. So it actually took me a very, very long time um, to cut through that. And in one of them, I actually had to cut through the the inner casing as well of the of the bush. So this was the bush. That was in here, for example. Well, not example. Actually, that was in here. The bolt wouldn't come out. And as you can see, I've cut through it on that side. I cut through it on this side and basically then removed the, the, um, the, the wishbone arm with the bolt basically welded inside there. As you can see, it's welded. That's not coming out. Okay, so that's the upper wishbone arm. The lower wishbone arm has, again, a large bushing and a smaller bushing, so two different types of bushings. These, are, these bushings are actually in two parts, but we'll discuss that later. And this one is fitted to the chassis underneath. If I'll point to it here. You can see there, it's fitted there with this bolt. The good thing about this bolt, when it goes through, it goes through, there's a, 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 a nut welded at the back of this. So you only need to undo it from here. I think it's a 19 or 17 mil, I can't remember now. Uh, but you only needed to undo it from here and it will come out. You don't need to hold anything behind it um, at all. And then the other side that it connects to chassis is here, in that hole, in this aperture here, and the bolt goes through. The bolt that goes through to connect it at the bottom is actually, this, is actually the, um, the stud for the track rod end, or what they sometimes call, what else do they call it, tie rod or track rod end. Um, but that's what goes through, and I'll show it to you here. Here it is. So this is the lower wishbone arm that I was talking about, and this is the the track rod where you can adjust the tracking off the back of the car, and I'll show you more about that later. And that's the track rod end, or tie rod, sometimes people call it, and that goes through the chassis mount, through the bushing on the lower wishbone arm, and then you tighten it up at the bottom. And that didn't, that came out without much difficulty. Then we also have our damper and spring. That connects to the lower wishbone arm. If I just remove it, it connects in there. So if I took this bolt out, this would connect inside here, and the bolt would feed through underneath and tighten up. And the upper part of it connects to the chassis just up here. You can see it connects in here, so where the, my ruler has gone in, that's where it would connect to. Okay, and the last thing I want to show you is the handbrake cable, which is here. So, mostly the handbrake cable should come out quite easily. Now, my handbrake is not tensioned, I've actually taken it off the car. So, basically, you might need to use a pair of pliers or something, but you would pull this out, hope you can see that, move it across, and then that would remove its tension, so that, will, that can come out. So. I can take that off um, from, the, from here. And the uh, other part of it here, which I had a little bit of difficulty, so I'm going to move this a little bit now, so you can see. You can see how this fits in. Basically, this is not threaded or anything, it just pulls out. Now, mine was rusted, and I, I didn't understand, so I actually had to get a mole grip on this, and I had to turn it, turn it, use lots of spray, uh, penetrating spray, turn it, turn it, turn it, and it came out. So I'll just get a pair of pliers, so I can just pull that out now, because I just pushed it back in. So you can see here, yep. and basically that comes out like that. So when I reassemble all of this, it's going to be nice and cleaned and polished up, etc. So what we're going to do now is, so basically you will remove this cable. Whoops, everything's falling apart now. You will remove this cable from here, from the inside of here like so, and then that will, um, it's a little rubber bellow there, and that will come out and you've removed your handbrake cable. So So basically that's how, I'm not doing very good well here, am I? Right, there we go. So basically now I'm going to take this up onto the bench and we can have a good look at how we disassemble it. Um, you would not take it out like this from the car. You would first take off the, um, the disc. No, you wouldn't, sorry. You would first 
take off the caliper, then you take off the disc, you would then try to um, undo these and on this and you would have to get take off the um, the castle nut um, as well and I'll tell you what size tools and things that you will need for that. Okay so um, we'll just break now and put this up on the bench. Okay um, 